So guys, I want to make a video about Amir Khan. Now, a lot of you guys are saying in the comment section, I read all your comments, as you know, I respond to most of you. You're saying Amir Khan's not an elite fighter. This is what some of you have had to say. That Amir Khan's not an elite fighter, in your opinion, in some of your opinions. Now, firstly, I don't agree with this. I definitely don't agree with that. At one point, here's the thing about whether he's an elite fighter. What's your category of being an elite fighter? If your category of being an elite fighter is Terence Crawford, Lomachenko, Canelo, if that's what you call elite fighter, then he doesn't fit into that category. No, because he, he's not as consistent as, as, as consistent as they are. He's not got the boxing IQ that they have. Um, he's not calm under pressure like they are, right? And consistently. But if you're saying Josh Taylor's elite, right? Then Amir Khan's elite, right? There's no way you can tell me that Josh Taylor is elite and Amir Khan's not elite. He was at one point when he beat Zab Judo in the top 10 pound for pound, right? He beat, he's beaten some very good names in boxing, right? Respected names in boxing. So it all depends on what you guys think is elite, right? Depends on what you guys think is elite. If you think if you think, you know, Terence Crawford, Canelo and, and um, Crawford, um, Crawford, Lomachenko, these are what you think should be classified as elite, then no, he doesn't fit into that category. In his prime, he was very good. He was below them. But he, he, in his prime, he was an excellent fighter. He was an excellent, excellent fighter. And I feel like a lot of you guys just don't intentionally give him credit and talk about other things, his chin and stuff. But you don't give him credit about some of the things that he did great in his in his prime you know and he, let me tell you about Amir Khan's prime years Amir Khan's prime years were under Freddie Roach right his prime years were under Freddie Roach so that takes out the Prescott defeat his prime years were from Mar from Marco Antonio Barrera to Danny Garcia that was his prime years and in that period he lost twice right he lost to Lamont Peterson who most people thought he, he beat let's not forget in that fight he dropped Peterson three times he dropped Peterson three times in that fight, right? And he got points taken away, right? And that fight was controversial, split decision, very close, right? And Lamont Peterson afterwards failed a drugs test. And a lot of you guys give him stick for not rematching the guys that he lost. He was rematching Lamont Peterson, right? And Lamont Peterson failed a drugs test. So how is that Amir Khan's fault, right? Also with Danny Garcia defeat. We all know that Angel Garcia made some remarks about Amir Khan and he was angry. He went into that fight angry and I thought he fought the wrong fight. I thought he fought the wrong fight and he ended up getting caught. He wasn't able to recover and he got, and he got knocked out. It happened to Joshua, right? But some people don't even think Anthony Joshua's elite, right? Some people think that Anthony Joshua's not elite. It's everyone's opinion. Bob Arum said Joshua's not elite. Okay, so we lost to Danny Garcia. Now he wanted the rematch with Danny Garcia. He wanted to fight Danny Garcia. It was Danny Garcia that didn't want to fight Amir Khan. And you guys know that Amir Khan wanted the rematch. His dad and Danny Garcia were never keen on the rematch with Khan. Why, why is that? I, why do I think they weren't keen? Because they probably knew he would outbox them in the rematch. They, would ne they never fancied it, even though that would have made Danny Garcia huge money. Can you imagine a rematch with him and Danny, Khan, Amir Khan and Danny Garcia would have been a massive fight. But Danny Garcia didn't fancy the job. His dad didn't fancy the job. They didn't want it. They clearly said, we're moving on. We don't want to fight him again. So how is that Amir Khan's fault? What, what mistake Amir Khan made is when he was mandated to fight for the WBC title at 147 pounds, he went and fought Canelo. His trainer, Virgil Hunted, wanted him to take the Danny Garcia fight as well. And I think at that point, he would have beaten Danny Garcia. I would, I'm very confident he would have beaten Danny Garcia in a rematch. But again, if Amir Khan, like I said this before, if Amir Khan had beaten Danny Garcia, you guys would have said Danny Garcia is no good. Just the way he beat Zab Judah and you said Zab Judah was over the hill, but then Zab Judah went two years later, went life and death with, with um, uh, Danny Garcia. Two years after Amir Khan destroyed him. Now, Amir Khan b battered uh, Malinaji and then Malinaji years later went on to win a welterweight world title. And a lot of you guys say this as well. I want to point this out. A lot of you guys say 
Well, Amir Khan's not been world champion for eight years, right? If Amir Khan wanted to cherry pick and fight easy opponents, he could have easily become world title, world champion at a different weight class. Let me tell you, Amir Khan beat Devin Alexander if I believe he's a two-weight world champion, if I'm not mistaken. Malinaji was a two-weight world champion. That wasn't even a close fight. Amir Khan battered Malinaji. Devin Alexander, that wasn't a close fight. Devin Alexander was a two-way. Now, if Amir Khan fought Devin Alexander when he was welterweight world champion, he would have been world champion at welterweight. Broner was a welterweight world champion. Amir Khan would have beaten Adrian Broner. Madonna became a welterweight world champion. Amir Khan beat Marcos Madonna, if you guys don't remember, right? Amir Khan, when Liam Smith became world champion at 154, he beat a guy called Thompson. Don't you think if Amir Khan wanted to cherry pick a world title, he could have gone and, and beat uh, Thompson for a 154-pound title? If he wanted to, he could have cherry picked world titles and become a three-weight world champion, no problem. But then you guys would have said, oh, well, he never fought anyone. Do you see where I'm coming with this? With this? There's always an excuse. There's always an excuse. If he had won multiple world titles at multiple weights, you would have said, well, he's never really fought anyone. He beat Zab Judah, you said he's over the hill, but then he, Zab Judah gave Danny Garcia a life and death fight. He beat Malanaji, you guys said Malanaji's no good, but then Malanaji went and won a world title at welterweight. He beat Marcus Madonna, and you guys said, well, Madonna's no, no good. Madonna was crap anyway. This is, this is, I'm just saying some of the things that you say. Do you see? So you guys make who you feel fit elite. That's it. So... I don't know what, when you say is he elite. I don't know because it depends on what you what you're a, what you think elite is. If you think elite is Floyd Mayweather and Pacquiao, then no, he's not elite. If you think Crawford, Canelo, and Lomachenko are elite, no, he doesn't fit into that category. But if you think Josh Taylor's elite, then yeah, he is elite. What's elite though? What what's your definition of elite? So for you, a unified champion isn't an elite fighter. Is that what you're saying? Like. A unified champion can't be an elite fighter. That's what you're basically saying, right? He was unified champion at one point in his career. And if he was fighting in today's 140-pound division, he'd probably be undisputed champion. With how weak the 140-pound division is today, he'd probably be undisputed. If he had to run, if he had to fight the champions that Crawford had to fight to become, he'd probably be undisputed. Crawford had to fight, who did he fight? Victor Postal. Do you honestly think Amir Khan wouldn't have beat Victor Postal, right? He had to fight Julio Ndongo to become undis undisputed champion. He had to fight Un Ndongo. Just imagine Danny Garcia against Ndongo. Or Danny Garcia against Postal. Or Danny Garcia against... Crawford didn't fight top guys in 140 pounds. Look at the division when Amir Khan was fighting. Matisse, Madonna, Zab Judah... Tim Bradley, Devin Alexander, Matisse, Lamont Peterson. Do you see where I'm coming with this? It was top fighter after top fighter after top fighter. But I feel like a lot of you guys don't really give him much credit for it. But anyway, that's my opinion. That's my rant over. Um, so I don't know. It depends on what you think's elite. I think he was elite because my... Definition of elite is not being Mayweather, is not being Pacquiao. I feel guys below that can also be elite. But like I just said, if you think Mayweather and Pacquiao, Canelo, Crawford, Lomachenko, that's what you have to be to be elite, then he doesn't fit into that category because he's not as consistent as them. He's more erratic. He makes a lot more mistakes than those guys make. That's why he's got the losses on his record. But if you think Josh Taylor is elite, then... Amir Khan's beaten big names in the sport that he deserves to be elite. So it just depends on what your opinion is from that side. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, guys. And guys, remember to please like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.